Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm going to be looking at a bit of chemistry as I make underwater fireworks. Let's check it out. Normally you would look up into the sky to see fireworks, but this week I'm going to be using chemistry to take the fireworks underwater. Although these are not the same as real fireworks, you will still get to see colour explosions. Because it's not like real fireworks, I'm not going to go into detail about how real fireworks work. However, I have made a video previously on fireworks, so I'll put a link in the description for you to check that out. Also, part of this activity works on density, and although I will mention density in this video, I will not give a detailed explanation, because again, I've made a video on this previously, so again, there's a link in the description for you to check that video out. For this activity, you will need a couple of empty glass jars, glasses or plastic cups, some vegetable oil, some water at room temperature, different colours of food colouring, a couple of pipettes or droppers if your food colouring doesn't have a dropper function, and a couple of bowls and a couple of forks. The first thing I'm going to do is measure out a cup of water and pour this into one of my jars and set it to the side. Then I'm going to measure out a cup of oil, pour that into a second jar and put this jar to the side. I'm now going to take one of my empty bowls and measure out a tablespoon of water and add this to the bowl. And then I'm going to add a few drops of pink food colouring and mix this around with a pipette. You'll be able to see that the food colouring is mixing in with the water, so now I have pink coloured water. I'm going to bring back my jar with the oil in it and I'm going to suck up some of my food colouring and water mixture into a pipette and start putting drops of this into the jar with the oil and watch what happens. You'll notice that the droplets I am putting into the jar are just falling straight through the vegetable oil still in their droplet form. I now seem to have pink balls floating about inside the oil but not mixing with the oil at all. If I take a fork and start mixing this around, you'll notice that I still have these individual balls floating about despite the fork trying to mix it up. All I've managed to do is make the balls smaller. Ok, so we didn't see any bursts of colour or anything which could be classed as an underwater firework in that part of the activity. But that's ok because it worked exactly as it was supposed to. You're meant to end up with balls of food colouring floating around inside the vegetable oil and I will explain why later on. But now it's time to move on to try and create these underwater fireworks. I'm going to take my second bowl and measure out a tablespoon of oil and pour this into the bowl. I'm then going to add in some green food colouring and again I'm going to use a pipette to mix this around. You'll notice that the food colouring isn't really mixing with the oil, I'm ending up with a sort of oil layer and a food colouring layer, but that's ok, that is what I would expect to happen. I'm going to pull over my jar with water in it and suck up some of that food colouring and oil mixture into a second pipette. Now, just like I did with the previous jar, I'm going to put in individual drops of this oil and food colouring mixture into the jar of water and watch what happens. That time you'll have seen that as the droplets were hitting the water, there were trails of food colouring coming down through the water, with some bursts of colour at the bottom of the jar, but also some bursts of colour up at that surface level as the food colouring was breaking through. And that was our underwater fireworks. You'll also have noticed that the food colouring has mixed with the water to create green coloured water, unlike with the oil where the food colouring stayed separate. On the surface of the water we now have a layer of oil, it is not mixed in with the water because oil is not as dense as water so it sits on the top. But there's more at play than just the density of these liquids. Whether a liquid will mix is called its miscibility. Now, what determines whether liquids are going to mix together is based on what's called their polarity. Now, the molecules that make up a liquid are made up of different atoms which have negatively charged electrons in them. But sometimes some atoms attract more of these negatively charged electrons than others. 
This means that some parts of the liquid are negatively charged and others are positively charged, meaning it is a dipolar liquid. Liquids which have a completely even charge across them are called nonpolar liquids. So we have our polar liquids, which have an unbalanced charge, and our nonpolar liquids. And polar liquids and nonpolar liquids will not mix. Food colouring and water are both polar liquids, and that is why they mix. The food colouring diffused into the water. That's what it's called when it spreads out in amongst the water. However, the water and food colouring do not mix with the oil because of this polarity. And that is why we get blobs of water and food colouring floating about in the oil. This is also what allows you to be able to make a lava lamp, which is also a video that I have made before. So again, there's a link in the description for you to check that out. But the lava lamp works again on the miscibility of these liquids, as well as throwing in some vitamin C tablets to create those lava lamp-like bubbles. Something else I decided to do with this was take another bowl and put in a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil and have another jar of water. I then put in a few different colours of food colouring into the bowl, swirled it around and then just poured the whole contents of the bowl onto the water. And you'll see all those different colours fall through the middle of the water and then there are different colour bursts as all of that food colouring starts to diffuse into the water. There's also another way that you can do this activity and that is by taking a jar of water and creating a thicker layer of oil on the top before you do anything with the food colouring. Then when you drop food colouring on top of the oil, these droplets of food colouring drop down through the oil and then they burst into the water and again you get those underwater fireworks. It doesn't matter which way you do the activity, whether you do it the way I have mostly demonstrated in this video or whether you do it with a layer of oil on top of the water and then drop the food colouring in, the science and the chemistry behind this is the same. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demo and explanation videos I've done here to my STEM career interviews and here to my Things You Should Know series. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring underwater fireworks. <music>